Hi guys, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project, and today I have six batteries charging on the output of my Bedini motor with still 100 milliamps or less. I switched out to the analog meter because the digital meter was bouncing too much. It was just insane. And let me try to get you a straight shot here on there. Okay, there is the readout. It's just under 100 milliamps. So, uh, point, uh, it's 1.2 watt, is that right? So, roughly what I was estimating with the digital display is what I'm getting on the analog meter. Now, what we had here is this is a precision meter, and because this is pulsed uh, DC, is taken at impulses to the coil and the um, it also gets a little bit of feedback from the system if I understand correctly how this works I'm no expert but I do believe a little tiny bit of feedback goes to the battery could be because uh, the there was some crazy stuff going on with the meter anyway use the analog meters it's more stable it's smooth output okay this is showing the, uh, the voltage of my two golf cart batteries down below, the uh, 216 amp hour batteries. That's my primary output coming straight off the Bedini motor. That's always been there in the last few videos. Then the other day I added these two batteries, and you will have seen that. They're up to going on 6 volts now, okay? Um, this has been off overnight. I only just turned this on a few minutes ago. And uh, I've been running off this battery. Uh, well, I had that going for a little bit, but it was fluctuating on here a lot when I added the third set of batteries, which we'll get back to. So I thought something's weird, so I put a more stable battery on. That's a brand new battery as compared to an old junk battery. Still had the fluctuating, really crazy fluctuating when I added that set. Um, so anyway, I switched to analog. We're just under 100 milliamps. And the analog meter nicely averages out what's going on in there. So, all right, what we got? Ignore the three nine volts. I'm going to do an experiment with them later. They're dead. What we have here is the standard Bedini motor. And if you look at my previous video and the article that I did for that video, I did a circuit showing exactly how I um, have the output being shared from here. Collector of the transistor, right there's the transistor. Goes through two diodes and into the big battery bank going below. That's the standard circuit. All I did separate was I added another diode right there. Okay. And that one, if you follow the black battery or the black wire, goes to this set of batteries which was at 0.7 volts. Now they're at 6 volts and charging. These were empty and I filled them with water. I took off the caps and I filled them with water. I'm keeping them open so I can keep an eye on it as the spongy lead absorbs the, the liquid. I keep filling it. Anyway, um, that's that. We did that the other day. Now today, I took a crimp-on connector and added two more diodes. All right to the same output, same uh, lead on there, okay? Now that is going, if you follow the orange wire, to these two batteries, which were around four, five, six volts earlier. Right now they're at 10.84 under charge. So, no change on the input. Watch this. I'm gonna let you watch if I can get this in, in camera view. Alright, let's see. I'm going to take off the third set of batteries. Okay. Let that sit. I'm going to take off the second set of batteries. Alright. No change on the current. Now I'm going to reconnect. You watch this while I reconnect. For, uh, second set of batteries. Reconnected. I don't see any fluctuation in the meter. Alright, reconnect the third set of batteries. Reconnected. I don't see a change in the current being used out of the battery that's running the motor. But now, I'm at 10.82 watts. I'm going to disconnect that. 
Wait, let me readjust my, my resistance a little bit here. That even reduced the current some more. I'm going to disconnect that. And you can see there's a charge going on. All right? I'm going to reconnect that lead. You definitely see there's a charge going on. We're going to reconnect that wire. Boom. We have a charge. So, I've never seen this done. I've studied the forums and the websites and the articles. I've never seen anybody hook up multiple batteries off a single coil in a single transistor. Now, let me see if it's getting warm at all. No, that's cold. Let me get my laser thermometer. Where is it? Let's see if I can find my laser thermometer. We'll see if that's getting hot. Okay, I've got my laser thermometer. I'm going to go right on the transistor there. 80 degrees. Now let's see for comparison the wood here on the table. 80 degrees. Let's go on the battery. It should be a little bit cooler. A little 9 volt battery. 80. Uh, let's see. Something over here. 80 degrees. I guess that's it. So you'll have to trust me. Everything's... That's the temperature inside here right now. That's the temperature outdoors. 80 degrees. So that's room temperature. Same temperature as anything else in here, that transistor. Well charging. Two 216 amp hour batteries, two 7 amp hour batteries, and two more 7 amp hour batteries. And it's charging. Here you see the voltage. This is very, very slow though because it's a huge set of batteries. Here you see these you saw the other day and they are slowly coming up. Although I just lost half a volt. Something interesting. I wonder what I did. Let me see what happens if I disconnect this other set if that changes. Does that go up? Five and a half volts. I was nearing, I thought I was nearing six. It's a problem with analog meters on the voltages, is it's awkward to see. Anyway, okay, I just reconnected that and that one's going up. Now, here is a crazy, crazy thing. Everything else is the same. The current going into the system is not changing, okay? It stays there, it is steady. Watch this. I have a capacitor, a, a photo capacitor. All right, the negative lead is in the air right now. The positive lead is connected to the positive of this battery set. Now watch this meter as I connect the negative of the photo capacitor to the battery. Look at that. I wish I could get a better grip here. Hold on. I should use an alligator clip. I also don't want to fry myself because I don't know what kind of voltages and stuff we're dealing with here. 12.46 volts. Actually, the... No, I thought I felt the capacitor getting warm. I'm just extra sensitive. Alright, I'm going to put a, uh, a clamp. See, it drops right back down when I take that off. Something is going on. I'm going to put a, uh, another alligator clip on the other side of that to the battery, if I can find one. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. Alright guys, now, I've got the clip on the negative terminal of the battery. So I'm just going across the battery, alright? I have no idea what we're seeing here, but watch this. I'm going to connect that. Can we get that in the camera view? I'm going to connect that wire. Whoops. Boom. Voltage jumps tremendously. Now I wonder if we're seeing a voltage in the capacitor because these are bad batteries. So, just to eliminate that possibility, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to measure the voltage of that capacitor. Maybe we're just seeing a high voltage in that residual. So let's come back, okay? Okay, we do have a voltage in that capacitor. So maybe what I'm seeing is that voltage is overriding. These are probably really bad. So I'm going to experimentally put it over these and see what happens. And then we're going to try it in series with any of these and see if anything happens here, okay? Yeah, that voltage is dropping while I'm looking at the meter. So these are really, really bad. I think they probably need some uh, water added. Alright, we'll disconnect that. Okay. But when I put this capacitor over here, it's definitely showing me these are bad, bad batteries. <clears throat> Because the voltage of the capacitor is what we're seeing then. I can't reach. Anyway, you saw it before. 
So, I'm going to try putting it over here. I'm going to have to set my camera down and see what we can do here. Okay, guys, I have the capacitor in my hand connected to the positive of that battery there, and I'm going to touch it to the negative of this battery over here and see if the voltage changes. I don't have a digital voltmeter on here. Let's see what happens. These are dead batteries, though. Yes, it jumps up. Um, I think it's got to be the voltage in the capacitor is overriding the batteries because they're so weak. It's got to be. It's got to be that. I'm going to short this capacitor out and see what happens. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to experimentally see if I can... Oh, there was a spark. A little bit of smoke there. Wow. There was some power in that. I'm going to experimentally see if I can um, increase the output of this Bedini motor on any of these battery sets. So I'm going to come back over here to the digital, hook that up on a positive lead, take this over here. Now the capacitor is empty, okay? And let's put it on here to the negative and see if anything happens. Whoa! Now that's crazy. Wow! Interesting. Alright, let me show it just again. I think I might have to go get my tripod. This is weird. Although with my tripod, I can't show you what I'm doing very well. That's... Something's going on here. Twelve point three two. Alright, let me short that out. And this is awkward holding my camera with one hand and everything, but I want to try to show you what's going on so there's no doubts here. Alright? Get that on there. All right, 12.24. Let's short that out. Okay, boom. There was a spark. There was a lot of power in that thing. Zero. Okay, zero, 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 zero. Take that off, and there's a recovery. In an electrolytic capacitor, there's a voltage recovery to some extent. I don't know why. I actually, the meter might be back feeding in there, but anyway, there is some recovery. I have read. Now we've got this down to point whatever thousandths of a volt okay put this back on here I have no idea what's going on put this on a positive lead okay now I've got the negative lead hanging here connected I want to connect that right here and watch that jump boom something's going on here guys that capacitor was empty so it's not the voltage of the capacitor that's making it I don't know what's going on. I know there's some electronics engineers that are going to be scratching their heads, and there's some engineers that are going to tell me what happened. Probably. Maybe. Maybe not. But when I put that capacitor across these terminals, that voltage jumps tremendously. Disconnect it. Goes back down. Now, this is still under charge. Watch this. Alright, careful. I got that lead hanging there. This is still under charge. Alright. I'll remove the charging lead off the Bedini motor, and you watch that drop, because these batteries are dead. Look at that. Okay. So we're still getting charge off the Bedini motor. Alright. Comes right back up. Now, the crazy thing is when I connect this lead going across the battery. Plus to plus, minus to minus. Snap. Voltage comes up. Look at that. And we know we know it's not the capacitor because I emptied it. Twice now. That's interesting, isn't it? Now somebody can probably tell me what that is. I don't know. So, again, no change here. Looking happy here, no change here, the uh, main battery charging set. This guy's slowly, slowly rising, although I'd like to see him come up. Uh, how about, well, if I have enough wires, I'd like to hook up a capacitor on here too and see what happens. Let me see if I can find some wires. I'm running out of jumpers. Okay guys, I'm back. About 90 milliamps, still the same, haven't, I haven't touched anything down here. 
here we've got the capacitor shorted crossed in parallel with the battery plus to plus minus to minus voltage is up charging voltage is tremendously raised now that it's settled off you can see it's starting to come up a little bit or down I don't know it's settling somewhere at some point here we have these two batteries at 7.5 volts now these were dead these were at 0 0.7 the other day all right it's fluctuating but that's standard with a digital meter on a Bedini now I've got this little capacitor it's a uh, 22 microfarad at 50 volts I'm going to short this to the negative terminal on the battery let's see what happens voltage increase 12.37 look at that still high still high I have no idea what's going on guys but by adding a capacitor I'm increasing the voltage um, now because these are the bigger batteries the Bedini motor is running in tune to the big batteries so nothing else I do in the back end affects it it doesn't even see these um, the Bedini motor adjusts itself and its run speed uh, based on your battery is hooked up to it so the size of the battery and the impedance the resistance of the battery impedance will affect the speed and performance of the motor okay because these are bigger batteries I do believe that that is now just nothing's changing on the speed or anything no matter what I connect after that okay uh, let's make sure the transistor is still cool to the touch actually 79 degrees that's fine um, I don't know what's going on here we're down to 12.38 and 12.2627 I don't know what's going on by adding a capacitor here we get increased output power so um, I'm gonna let these sit for a while with the capacitors on I'm wondering if these two are going to come to the same voltage. I don't see how because they're isolated by a diode. There's no way they can conduct through backwards. There's no way. They're electronically isolated by the diodes. So I don't know what's going on. We'll see what happens with this voltages and watch them settle and see where they go. But this is weird. Hey guys if anything else comes up interesting um, I'll get back to you but here we have capacitor plus to plus minus to minus and a capacitor plus to plus minus to minus um, literally in parallel with the battery sets and here we have six batteries on the Bedini motor being charged at one time with one coil one transistor the only difference is three sets of diodes one set of diodes for each pair of batteries being charged doesn't change the input at all interesting stuff guys if I have if I get some more batteries some more wires and some more capacitors and stuff I will continue on and see what we can string up on this workbench very very curious all right guys some time has passed here we're at 11.33 uh, 1233, 1234, it looks like it's climbing. Here we're at 11.9, so 0.8.9. It's really bouncing. It's weird. So, um, the voltages have stabilized here at 1235. That is charging. It is going up. And just for kicks, I have connected another. This one is not showing a charge, though. I had a, another diode hanging here extra. Um, these poles are reversed, so don't worry about the color there. Those are wrong. But that's plugged into here. And this, as you can see, is not full. It needs to get some more charge. So I'll let that run and see what happens anyway. That's off that other diode. But there's yet another battery connected. 